missing in action is a casualty classification assigned to armed services personnel and other combatants who are reported missing during wartime. They may have been killed, wounded, become a prisoner of war, or deserted. If deceased, neither their remains nor grave has been positively identified. Becoming MIA has been an occupational risk for as long as there has been warfare. Problems and solutions, until around 1912, service personnel in most countries were not routinely issued with ID tags. As a result, if someone was killed in action and his body was not recovered until much later, there was little or no chance of identifying the remains. Starting around the time of the First World War, nations began to issue their service personnel with purpose-made ID tags. Usually, these were made of some form of lightweight metal such as aluminum. However, in the case of the British Army the material chosen was compressed fiber, which was not very durable. Although wearing ID tags proved to be highly beneficial, the problem remained the bodies could be completely destroyed, burned or buried by the type of high-explosive munitions routinely used in modern warfare. Additionally, the combat environment itself could increase the likelihood of missing personnel such as jungle warfare, or submarine warfare, and air crashes in remote mountainous terrain, a desert, or at sea. Alternatively, there could be administrative errors for example the actual location of a temporary battlefield grave could be misidentified or forgotten due to the fog of war. Finally, since military forces had no strong incentive to keep detailed records of enemy dead, Bodies were frequently buried in temporary graves, the locations of which were often lost or obliterated for example the forgotten mass grave at Fromals. As a result, the remains of missing combatants might not be found for many years, if ever. When missing combatants are recovered and cannot be identified after a thorough forensic examination the remains are interred with a tombstone which indicates their unknown status. The development of genetic fingerprinting in the late 20th century means that if cell samples from a cheek swab are collected from service personnel prior to deployment to a combat zone, identity can be established using even a small fragment of human remains. Although it is possible to take genetic samples from a close relative of the missing person, it is preferable to collect such samples directly from the subjects themselves. It is a fact of warfare that some combatants are likely to go missing in action and never be found. However, by wearing ID tags and using modern technology the numbers involved can be considerably reduced. In addition to the obvious military advantages, conclusively identifying the remains of missing service personnel is highly beneficial to the surviving relatives. Having positive identification makes it somewhat easier to come to terms with their loss and move on with their lives. Otherwise some relatives may suspect that the missing person is still alive somewhere and may return someday. However, many of these identifying procedures are not typically used for combatants who are members of militias, mercenary armies, insurrections, and other irregular forces. Before the 20th century, it is possible that some of the soldiers who fought at the Battle of the Mopili in 480 BC went missing in action. Certainly. The numerous wars which followed over successive centuries created many MIAs. The list is long and includes most battles which have ever been fought by any nation. The usual problems of identification caused by rapid decomposition were exacerbated by the fact that it was common practice to loot the remains of the dead for any valuables for example personal items and clothing. This made the already difficult task of identification even harder. Thereafter the dead were routinely buried in mass graves and scanned official records were retained. Notable examples include such medieval battles as Toton, the Hundred Years' War, the later English Civil Wars and Napoleonic Wars together with any battle taking place until around the middle of the 19th century. Starting around the time of the Crimean War, American Civil War and Franco-Prussian War, it became more common to make formal efforts to identify individual soldiers. However, since there was no formal system of ID tags at the time, this could be difficult during the process of battlefield clearance. Even so, there had been a notable shift in perceptions for example where the remains of a soldier in Confederate uniform were recovered from, say, the Gettysburg battlefield, he would be interred in a single grave with a headstone which stated that he was an unknown Confederate soldier. This change in attitudes coincided with the Geneva Conventions, 
the first of which was signed in 1864. Although the first Geneva Convention did not specifically address the issue of MIAs, the reasoning behind it was influential. World War I, the phenomenon of MIAs became particularly notable during World War I, where the mechanized nature of modern warfare meant that a single battle could cause astounding numbers of casualties. For example, in 1916 over 300,000 Allied and German service personnel were killed in the Battle of the Somme. A total of 19,240 British and Commonwealth troops were killed in action or died of wounds on the first day of that battle alone. It is therefore not surprising that the Thiepval Memorial to the Missing of the Somme in France bears the names of 72,090 British and Commonwealth soldiers, all of whom went missing in action during the Battle of the Somme were never found and who have no known grave. Similarly, the Menin Gate Memorial in Belgium commemorates 54,896 missing Allied soldiers who are known to have been killed in the Ypres salient. The Dauermont Ossuary, meanwhile, contains 130,000 unidentifiable sets of French and German remains from the Battle of Verdun. Even in the 21st century, the remains of missing soldiers are recovered from the former battlefields of the Western Front every year. These discoveries happen regularly, often during the course of agricultural work or construction projects. Typically, the remains of one or several men are found at a time. However, occasionally the numbers recovered are much larger for example the mass grave at Fromelles which contained the skeletal remains of no less than 250 Allied soldiers. Another example is the excavation which took place at Kars back in early 2012, which uncovered the remains of 21 German soldiers, lost in an underground shelter since 1918, after being buried by a large calibre British artillery shell. Regardless, efforts are made to identify any remains found via a thorough forensic examination. If this is achieved, attempts are made to trace any living relatives. However, it is frequently impossible to identify the remains, other than to establish some basic details of the unit they served with. In the case of British and Commonwealth MIAs, the headstone is inscribed with the maximum amount of information that is known about the person. Typically, such information is deduced from metallic objects such as brass buttons and shoulder flashes bearing regimental unit insignia found on the body. As a result, Headstones are inscribed with such information as a soldier of the Cameronians, or an Australian corporal etc. Where nothing is known other than that the person fought on the Allied side, the headstone is inscribed a soldier of the Great War. The term sailor, or airman can be substituted, as appropriate. World War II, there are many missing combatants from World War II. In the United States Armed Forces, 78,750 missing in action were reported by the conclusion of the war, representing over 19% of the total 405,399 killed in the conflict. The 1991 Euro 1993 United States Senate Select Committee on POW MIA Affairs investigated a few outstanding issues and reports related to the fate of U.S. service personnel still missing from World War II. As with MIAs from the First World War, it is a routine occurrence for the remains of missing combatants killed during the Second World War to be periodically discovered. Usually they are found purely by chance though on some occasions they are recovered following deliberate, targeted searches. As with the First World War, in Western Europe MIAs are generally found as individuals, or in twos or threes. However, Sometimes the numbers in a group are considerably larger for example the mass grave at villeneuve lubit which contained the remains of 14 German soldiers killed in August 1944. Others are located at remote aircraft crash sites in various countries. But in Eastern Europe and Russia, World War II casualties include approximately 2 million missing Germans, and many mass graves remain to be found. Almost a half million German MIAs have been buried in new graves since the end of the Cold War. Most of them will stay unknown. The German War Graves Commission is spearheading the effort. Similarly, there are approximately four million missing Russian service personnel scattered across the former Eastern Front, from Leningrad down to Stalingrad, though around 300 volunteer groups make periodic searches of old battlefields to recover human remains for identification and reburial. During the 2000s, 
there was renewed attention within and without the U.S. military to finding remains of the missing, especially in the European theater and especially since aging witnesses and local historians were dying off. The group World War II Families for the Return of the Missing was founded in 2005 to work with the Joint POW-MIA Accounting Command and other governmental entities towards locating and repatriating the remains of Americans lost in the conflict. The president of the group said in reference to the far more publicized efforts to find remains of U.S. dead from the Vietnam War, a year OE Vietnam had advocates. This was an older generation and they didn't a Euro unregistered trademark T know who to turn to a Euro in 2008, investigators began to conduct searches on Tarawa Atoll in the Pacific Ocean, trying to locate the remains of 139 American Marines, missing since the Battle of Tarawa in 1943. According to the Defense Prisoner of War Missing Personnel Office, there were still 73,624 U.S. servicemen still unaccounted for from World War II. Korean War, there are many missing combatants from the Korean War. It is thought that 13,000 South Korean soldiers and 2,000 U.S. soldiers are buried in the Korean demilitarized zone alone. The U.S. Joint POW-MIA Accounting Command and the equivalent South Korean Command are actively involved in trying to locate and identify remains of both countries' personnel. In the United States Armed Forces, the 8,177 service members listed as missing in action constituted over 15% of the total killed in the conflict. In August 1953, General James Van Fleet, who had led U.S. and U.N. forces in Korea, estimated that a large percentage of those service members listed missing in action were alive. The 1991 Euro 1993 United States Senate Select Committee on POW MIA Affairs investigated some outstanding issues and reports related to the fate of U.S. service personnel still missing from the Korean War. Remains of missing combatants from the Korean War are periodically recovered and identified. As of May 9, 2014, according to the Defense Prisoner of War Missing Personnel Office, there are still 7,883 U.S. servicemen still unaccounted for from the Korean War. As of September 3, 2014 the number of Korea War MIAS are 7,881. As of October 17, 2014 the number of Korea War MIAS are 7,879. According to DPMO estimates there are 3,067 to 3,828 MIAS in North Korea. In 2011 the Veterans of Foreign Wars adopted Resolution No. 423 calling for renewed discussions with North Korea to recover Americans missing in action. In February 2012 talks were going ahead between the U.S. and North Korea to resume discussions to recover U.S. MIAs after seven years. In March 2012 U.S. President Obama administration suspended talks with North Korea over the recovery of U.S. servicemen killed and missing in North Korea. In October 2014 North Korea announced it was going to move the remains of about 5,000 U.S. servicemen in us. While the United States knew in 1953 that at least 900 troops were held captive by North Korea and never released, this information was never released. Historians suggest this was because Americans would have demanded their soldiers be returned home. In 1996. The Defense Department stated that there was no clear evidence any of the prisoners were still alive. As of 2005, at least 500 South Korean prisoners of war were believed to be still detained by the North Korean regime. A number of Australian military personnel have also never been recovered from Korea. Since 1996, the remains of Korean People's Army soldiers recovered from battlefield exhumations across South Korea have been buried in the cemetery for North Korean and Chinese soldiers, the majority of the 770-plus burials are unknowns. Vietnam War Following the Paris Peace Accords of 1973, 591 U.S. prisoners of war were returned during Operation Homecoming. The U.S. listed about 1,350 Americans as prisoners of war or missing in action and roughly 1,200 Americans reported killed in action and body not recovered. By the early 1990s, this had been reduced to a total of 2,255 unaccounted for from the war, which constituted less than 4% of the total 58,152 U.S. service members killed. 
This was by far the smallest proportion in the nation's history to that point. About 80% of those missing were airmen who were shot down over North Vietnam or Laos, usually over remote mountains, tropical rainforest, or water. The rest typically disappeared in confused fighting in dense jungles. Investigations of these incidents have involved determining whether the men involved survived their show down, and if not efforts to recover their remains. POW MIA activists played a role in pushing the U.S. government to improve its efforts in resolving the fates of the missing. Progress in doing so was slow until the mid-1980s, when relations between the U.S. and Vietnam began to improve and more cooperative efforts were undertaken. Normalization of U.S. relations with Vietnam in the mid-1990s was a culmination of this process. Considerable speculation and investigation has gone to a theory that a significant number of these men were captured as prisoners of war by communist forces in the two countries and kept as live prisoners after the war's conclusion for the United States in 1973. A vocal group of POW MIA activists maintains that there has been a concerted conspiracy by the Vietnamese government and every American government since then to hide the existence of these prisoners. The U.S. government has steadfastly denied that prisoners were left behind or that any effort has been made to cover up their existence. Popular culture has reflected the live prisoners theory, most notably in the 1985 film Rambo, First Blood Part II. Several congressional investigations have looked into the issue, culminating with the largest and most thorough, the United States Senate Select Committee on POW MIA Affairs of 1991 a Euro 1993 led by Senators John Kerry, Bob Smith, and John McCain. Its unanimous conclusion found no compelling evidence that proves that any American remains alive in captivity in Southeast Asia. This missing in action issue has been a highly emotional one to those involved, and is often considered the last depressing, divisive after effect of the Vietnam War. To skeptics, live prisoners is a conspiracy theory unsupported by motivation or evidence, and the foundation for a cottage industry of charlatans who have preyed upon the hopes of the families of the missing. As two skeptics wrote in 1995, the conspiracy myth surrounding the Americans who remained missing after Operation Homecoming in 1973 had evolved to Baroque intricacy. By 1992, there were thousands of zealots a euro who believed with cult-like fervor that hundreds of American POWs had been deliberately and callously abandoned in Indochina after the war, that there was a vast conspiracy within the armed forces and the executive branch a euro spanning five administrations a euro to cover up all evidence of this betrayal, and that the governments of communist Vietnam and Laos continued to hold an unspecified number of living American POWs, despite their adamant denials of this charge. Believers reject such notions. As one wrote in 1994, it is not conspiracy theory, not paranoid myth, not Rambo fantasy. It is only hard evidence of a national disgrace. American prisoners were left behind at the end of the Vietnam War. They were abandoned because six presidents and official Washington could not admit their guilty secret. They were forgotten because the press and most Americans turned away from all things that reminded them of Vietnam. There are also a large number of North Vietnamese and Viet Cong MIAs from the Vietnam War whose remains have yet to be recovered. In 1974, General Var Micron Nguyen UNGAP stated that they had 330,000 missing in action. As of 1999, estimates of those missing were usually around 300,000. This figure does not include those missing from former South Vietnamese armed forces, who are given little consideration under the Vietnamese regime. The Vietnamese government did not have any organized program to search for its own missing, in comparison to what it had established to search for American missing. The discrepancy angered some Vietnamese. As one said, it's crazy for the Americans to keep asking us to find their men. We lost several times more than the Americans did. In any war there are many people who disappear. They just disappear. In the 2000s, Thousands of Vietnamese were hiring psychics in an effort to find the remains of missing family members. The Vietnamese army organizes what it considers to be the best of the psychics, as part of its parapsychology force trying to find remains. Additionally, remains dating from the earlier French colonial era were sometimes discovered. In January 2009, 
the remains of at least 50 anti-French resistance fighters dating from circa 1946 to 1947 were discovered in graves located under a former markets in central Hanoi. According to the Defense Prisoner of War Missing Personnel Office, there are still 1,642 U.S. servicemen still unaccounted for from the Vietnam War. Cold War, according to the Defense Prisoner of War Missing Personnel Office, as of 2000 there were still 126 U.S. servicemen unaccounted for from the Cold War. April 8, 1950, a U.S. Navy PB-4Y2 privateer flying out of Wiesbaden, Germany, was shot down by Soviet fighters over the Baltic Sea. The entire crew of 10 remains unaccounted for. November 6, 1951, a U.S. Navy P-2V Neptune was shot down over the Sea of Japan. The entire crew of 10 remains unaccounted for. June 13, 1952, a U.S. Air Force RB-29 Superfortress stationed at Yokota Air Base, Japan, was shot down over the Sea of Japan. The entire crew of 12 remains unaccounted for. October 7, 1952, a U.S. Air Force RB-29 Superfortress stationed at Yokota Air Base, Japan was shot down north of Hokkaido Island, Japan. Of the eight crewmen on board, seven remain unaccounted for. November 28, 1952, a civilian C-47 Skytrain aircraft flying over China was shot down, and one American civilian remains unaccounted for. January 18, 1953, a U.S. Navy P-2V Neptune with 13 crewmen aboard was shot down by the Chinese, in the Formosa Straits. Six crew members remain unaccounted for. July 29, 1953, a U.S. Air Force RB 50 Super Fortress stationed at Yokota Air Base, Japan, was shot down over the Sea of Japan. Of the 17 crew members on board, 14 remain unaccounted for. May 6, 1954, a civilian C 119 flying boxcar aircraft flying over northern Vietnam was shot down. One of the two Americans on board remains unaccounted for. April 17, 1955, a U.S. Air Force RB-47 Strata jet based at Tielsen Air Base, Alaska, was shot down near the southern point of Kamkatka Peninsula, Russia. The entire crew of three remains unaccounted for. August 22, 1956, a U.S. Navy P-4M Mercator was shot down off the coast of China. Of the 16 crew members on board, 12 remain unaccounted for. September 10, 1956, a U.S. Air Force RB 50 Super Fortress based at Yokota Air Base, Japan, with a crew of 16, was lost in Typhoon M over the Sea of Japan. The entire crew remains unaccounted for. July 1, 1960, a U.S. Air Force RB 47 Strata jet stationed at RAF Bryce Norton, England, was shot down over the Barents Sea. Of the six crew members on board, Three remain unaccounted for. December 14, 1965, a U.S. Air Force RB 57 Canberra was lost over the Black Sea, flying out of Inslick Air Base, Turkey. The entire crew of two remains unaccounted for. April 15, 1969, a U.S. Navy EC 1 Warning Star was shot down by North Korean fighters. Of the 31 men on board, 29 remain unaccounted for. The 1991 Euro 1993 United States Senate Select Committee on POWMIA Affairs investigated some outstanding issues and reports related to the fate of U.S. service personnel still missing from the Cold War. In 1992, Russian President Boris Yeltsin told the committee that the Soviet Union had held survivors of spy planes shot down in the early 1950s in prisons or psychiatric facilities. Russian Colonel General Dmitry Volkogonov, co-leader of the U.S. Euro-Russia Joint Commission on POWMIAs, said that to his knowledge no Americans were currently being held against their will within the borders of the former Soviet Union. The select committee concluded that it found evidence that some U.S. POWs were held in the former Soviet Union after WW2, the Korean War and Cold War incidents, and that it cannot, based on its investigation to date, rule out the possibility that one or more U.S. POWs from past wars or incidents are still being held somewhere within the borders of the former Soviet Union. Iran-Euro-Iraq War, 
The Iran Euro Iraq War of 1980 Euro 1988 left tens of thousands of Iranian and Iraqi combatants, including some who had been held as prisoners of war, still unaccounted for. Some counts include civilians who disappeared during the conflict. One estimate is that more than 52,000 Iraqis went missing in the war. Officially, the government of Iran lists 8,000 as missing. Following up on these cases is often difficult because no accurate or surviving documentation exists. The situation in Iraq is additionally difficult because unknown hundreds of thousands of persons are missing due to Iraq's later conflicts, both internal and external, and in Iran due to its being a largely closed society. In addition, relations between the countries remained quite poor for a long time. The last POWs from the war were not exchanged until 2003 and relations did not begin to improve until after the regime change brought on by the 2003 onset of the Iraq War. Some cases are brought forward when mass graves are discovered in Iraq, holding the bodies of Iranians once held prisoner. Websites have been started to attempt to track the fates of members of the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force shot down and captured over Iraq. The International Committee of the Red Cross has been active in trying to resolve MIA issues from the war. In October 2008, 20 years after the end of the war, the ICRC forged a memorandum of understanding with the two countries to share information collected in pursuit of resolving cases. Families are still desperate for knowledge about the fate of their loved ones. In Iran, Efforts at answering families' questions and identifying remains are led by the POWs and Missing Commission of the Islamic Republic of Iran Army, the Red Crescent Society of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and the Foundation of Martyrs and Veterans Affairs. In Iraq, efforts are led by the Ministry of Human Rights. Operation El Dorado Canyon, April 15, 1986, an F-111F Ardvac was shot down by anti-aircraft artillery along with a pilot and weapon systems officer. Captain Reba's Dominic's body was returned to the U.S. in 1989. Captain Lawrence's body was never found. He is still listed as killed in action, body not recovered. Gulf War, according to the Defense Prisoner of War Missing Personnel Office, 47 Americans were listed as POW MIAs at some point during Operation Desert Storm. At the conclusion of the Gulf War of 1991, U.S. forces resolved all but one of those cases A 21 prisoners of war were repatriated, 23 bodies were recovered and two bodies were lost over the Gulf and therefore classified as killed in action, body not recovered. That one MIA case, that of U.S. Lieutenant CMDR. Michael Scott Seicher, became quite well known. He was reported as missing after his F-A-18 was shot down in northern Iraq on the first night of the war. Over the years his status was changed from missing to killed in action to missing captured, a move that suggested he was alive and imprisoned in Iraq. In 2002, his possible situation became a more high-profile issue in the build-up to the Iraq war. The Washington Times ran five successive front-page articles about it in March 2002 and in September 2002. U.S. President George W. Bush mentioned Seicher in a speech to the United Nations General Assembly as part of his case for war. However, despite the 2003 invasion of Iraq and U.S. military control of the country, Seicher was not found and his status remained under debate. It was eventually resolved in August 2009 when his remains were found in the Iraq desert where, according to local civilians, he was buried following his crash in 1991. How many Iraqi forces went missing as a result of the war is not readily known, as estimates of Iraqi casualties overall range considerably. The two cases KIABNR, Lt. CMDR. Barry T. Cook, U.S. Navy, was lost on February 2, 1991, when his A-6 aircraft went down in the Persian Gulf. Lt. Robert J. Dwyer, U.S. Navy, was lost on February 5, 1991 when his F-A-18 aircraft went down in the Persian Gulf. Global War on Terrorism, Operation Iraqi Freedom, a small number of coalition military personnel went missing in action in Iraq immediately following the 2003 invasion. Eight servicemen were captured and later released. Other cases were quickly resolved when the bodies were recovered. Following this were the following POW MIA cases, 
On October 9, 2003 Mr. Kirk von Ackermann, DoD contractor, was lost on October 9, 2003, while working in forward operating base Pace Setter, Iraq. On April 9, 2004, U.S. Army soldier SSG Keith Matthew Matt Morpin was captured in an ambush near the Baghdad International Airport. On April 16, 2004, Morpin appeared on a videotape that was broadcast by the Arabic-language television network Al Jazeera. On June 28, 2004, Al Jazeera reported that Morpin was executed by a group identifying itself as the persistent power against the enemies of God and the Prophet. The method of execution in the video was a gunshot to the head. On March 30, 2008, Morpin's father told local news media that the remains of his son had been found. He stated that an army general had told him that DNA was used to identify the remains. According to an army statement, Morpin's remains were recovered northwest of Baghdad on March 20, by soldiers from 1st Battalion, 21st Infantry, based out of Schofield Barracks, Hawaii, part of the 25th Infantry Division's 2nd Striker Brigade Combat Team. On April 9, 2004 Mr. Timothy E. Bell, DoD contractor, was lost on April 9, 2004, while working in Baghdad, Iraq. On June 19, 2004, a U.S. Marine of Lebanese background, Corporal Wasfali Khasoun, went missing and claimed to have been captured. He later turned up in Lebanon, and was flown home to the U.S. It was soon discovered Khasoun made the kidnapping story up, and Khasoun is currently a fugitive. On June 16, 2006, a three-member U.S. Army patrol in an armored Humvee was overwhelmed south of Baghdad. One soldier died during the fight while the other two were captured and tortured to death. Their names were PFC Christian Menchaka and PFC Thomas Lowell Tucker. Their bodies were found on June 20, 2006. On October 23, 2006, U.S. Army soldier SSG Ahmed Kuzi Al-Tali was captured by insurgents. He appeared in a proof-of-life video in February 2007 but was not heard of again. Ahmed's remains were recovered in February 2012. On November 27, 2006, an U.S. Air Force F-16C Fighting Falcon, serial number 90-0776, from the 524th Fighter Squadron crashed near Fallujah while on a low-altitude ground strafing run. The pilot, Major Troy Gilbert, was killed. His body was taken by insurgents. It was never recovered. On January 20, 2007 insurgent commandos raided provincial headquarters in Karbala, Iraq. The attack resulted in three American soldiers being wounded and one killed. Four servicemen, CPT Brian Freeman, 1LT Jacob Fritz, Space Jonathan Chisholm and PFC Sean Falter were captured and executed. On March 3, 2007 DOD Mr. Adnan El Hilawi, DoD contractor, was lost on March 3, 2007, while working in Baghdad, Iraq. On May 12, 2007 a U.S. Army observation post was overrun by Iraqi insurgents. Four American and one Iraqi soldiers were killed. Three U.S. soldiers were captured. They were PFC Joseph J. Anzac Jr., Private Byron W. Fauti, and SPC Alex Jimenez. Iraqi police found PFC Anzac's body in the Euphrates River south of Baghdad on May 23, 2007 bearing signs of torture. On June 4, 2007, the insurgent organization Islamic State of Iraq claimed that they killed Private Fauti and SPC Jimenez and also claimed that their bodies were buried and would not be returned to their families. On Wednesday, July 9, 2008, the bodies of Private Byron Fauti and SPC Alex Jimenez were found in an area south of Baghdad known as the Triangle of Death. The families of the victims were notified and the Defense Department released a statement to the public on July 11, 2008. Although the Department of Defense claims that all of the servicemen above is accounted for, Major Troy Gilbert's body has not been recovered. A small amount of tissue was recovered from the crash site which was used to classify him as killed in action body recovered. However, Al-Qaeda has released two videos, showing the desecration of his body and his photo ID card. The U.S. Air Force has recently agreed to resume looking for his body. Also, 
the whereabouts of the three do contractors, Mr. Kirk von Ackerman, Mr. Timothy E. Bell and Mr. Adnan El Hilawi is unknown. Operation Enduring Freedom On July 1, 2009, U.S. Army Soldier Sergeant Bo Robert Bergdahl, 23, of Ketchum, Idaho, was declared missing, which was later changed to captured on July 3 of that year. A video was shown of him on July 18, 2009 indicating that he had been captured. A second video was released on December 25, 2009, again showing him in captivity. On April 7, 2010, the Taliban released a third video of Bergdahl in captivity. In the new video Bergdahl has a full head of hair, a beard and pleads for the release of Afghan prisoners that are held in Guantanamo and Bagram. On May 31, 2014, the U.S. Department of Defense announced that Sergeant Bergdahl was recovered by a U.S. Special Forces unit in conjunction with an exchange of five Taliban detainees from the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center. The effort was completed with the assistance of the Emir of Qatar. On July 4, 2011, a British soldier went missing in central Helmand province in Afghanistan. The Taliban later confirmed responsibility for his capture, but also announced they had executed him when ISAF forces attempted to rescue him in the following hours. The soldier was later named as 20-year-old Highlander Scott McLaren of the 4th Battalion, Royal Regiment of Scotland. His body was recovered and returned to the UK. Animals Military animals can also be officially declared as being missing in action. Colloquial usage, MIA is sometimes used in American English to describe difficulty finding something, particularly a person. The employee is MIA. It is less often used in this context in UK English, where the equivalent phrase is gone awol. See also, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, West Coast Memorial to the Missing of World War II, Dustun. Killed in Action, Garden of the Missing in Action, Israeli MIAs, References External links, Duty Instruction 1300.18 Personal Casualty Matters, Policies, and Procedures from the Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, January 8, 2008, Graphic Photos Showing Recovery of Missing Russian Soldiers Remains Dating from the Second World War, French site detailing the recovery of missing German soldiers dating from World War II, U.S.-Russia Joint MIA POW Commission, Report of the State Senate Committee on POW MIA Affairs at the Library of Congress, Current Status of MIAs from the Vietnam War, Blog Covers a Dog Our Euro Unregistered Trademark S Travels to Vietnam. In Search of Her MIA Husband A Euro Unregistered Trademark S Jet Crash Site in Khe Sun Mountains.